This changes everything. Stand up, Bangalo! Hey Garfanos, welcome back to another episode of Road to Next Stage. And today we've got a couple of new cars revealed for Gear Chronicle. And some of them are interesting budget alternative. But two new cards, especially one that was revealed today, changes everything for Gear Chronicle. Not only for the current standard build with Chrono Fang, but also just Gear Chronicle in general for standard. And this will also have some impact for premium. How much? You will find out in a moment. But before that, let's dive into the other cards beforehand so we can build our way up to this final climactic card that was revealed today. And we start off with this rare grade 2 that is Steam Maiden Ishbi. And she has a very interesting skill as her ability is auto rigor circle. At the end of the battle it attacked. If your hand has 3 or less cards, cost, count as 1 and retire this unit and draw 2 cards. So this is basically a way for Gear Chronicle to combat low hand size as they can just put this onto the field, apply some pressure and then remove it from the field and immediately draw two extra cards. This is nice in a very high tempo aggressive playstyle as you can put out some pressure and get some new cards and to defend for the next turn. A lot of very successful clans even in premium have some kind of cards that work similar to this as you can push out the pressure that you want to but don't lose on defensive hand size at the same time. In standard with Chrono Fang this looks at the same time to be very useful for the deck but also somewhat against what the deck wants to do as the problem is it's on attack you need to counter blast. And with Chrono Fang, if you go for the one or less card in hand, that means the moment you do that, everything is already face down and you cannot activate this skill. This card is mainly for Chrono Fang for the mid strategy, where you go for the three cards in hand, you attack with this thing, you go to five, then you attack with your Chrono Fang, and then you can retire two units, you don't get the power, but you will go up in hand size and you will end your turn probably with eight to nine cards. This is basically a way to use Chrono Fang Rebellion and Chrono Fang Tiger in a more conservative and a more prolonged game plan than just outright go for the all balls to the wall strategy where you go for as little cards in hand as possible and then try to build your hand size up to that. This could have been a useful card for Chrono Fang if it wasn't for the other card that was revealed today that basically blows this card out of the water. However, nonetheless, this card can work in different strategies as if you do not have a Vanguard that requires you to have a small kind of hand size the moment the Vanguard it attacks, this can actually work in different builds that just want to apply general pressure as you can unload your hand on turn 2 and probably go to the 3 or less cards requirement in hand but then use this ability to go back to 5 cards then Vanguard swings, you go to 6 and you basically didn't lose out on a lot of things. Also, the fact that this card retires itself combats the damage denying aspect in some regard. So, if you want to have a premium steal at your opponent going face and not for your rear guards, this will also be useful in that scenario. So, it's not the best card of them all, but it will have some niche applications that might find its way in certain builds. So, it's a nice addition for the clan as a whole. Another very interesting card that we got was this grade 2 that is Team Reporter Arbum. And Arbum's ability is auto when it intercepts, cost, bind a card from hand, and one of your units cannot be hit until the end of that battle. So, basically, this is an intercepting perfect guard. And when you analyze it, it doesn't really sound that amazing as it's vulnerable for control options and also your opponent can just ram into it. But there are some interactions on this card that makes it useful in certain situations. First off, it binds a card from hand. So instead that you discard for your PG, it binds a card directly from hand, which synergizes in some regards with the whole Mystery Flare deck strategy. So it is a nice alternative option for that build. And another thing about this card is that because it's a 10k vanilla, as it is in a Forest Clan, it does have some upsides against most other decks from Protect and, uh, and Axel, because they typically cannot easily beat over this thing if they want to ram into this card beforehand. As it is a perfect card that sits on the field, and if they do not have control options, they want to remove this before they hit the Vanguard, as this can just negate an attack, and because you can bind the card from hand, you can potentially advance your game state. So, 
This, in some regards, will force your opponent to waste a powerful attack or a strong enough attack that potentially also can hit your Vanguard on this unit. And in some regard, that will make this card useful as it saves some cards in hand. So depending on how you look at this card, this card might be interesting in certain situations, but it can also be redundant for most strategies. So it's a interesting option that we have. Probably won't be run in a lot of builds, maybe not at all, but maybe we'll ever have a situation where some interactions might make this card pretty good. Maybe we get a grade one or a unit that if it's in the same column, you unit in this whole column cannot be attacked or has resist or that kind of stuff. So depending what the future holds, this might come back or would do absolutely nothing. Then the final budget card and card that has an interesting ability that might or might not be used is Steam Link's Gudea. And this rare grade three with a force marker has the following ability. Act, Vanguard the Rearguard Circle, cost, discard a card from your hand, choose one of your opponent's rearguards, retire it, and this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn. So in, one, in some regards you can say it could be a support card for Chrono Fang because it's discard and it is another grade 3 with a force marker so you could go and get away with it. But probably most people rather want to run Chrono Fang together with Lost Legend so you always can stride, pseudo stride into Rebellion or whatever other grade 4s you're gonna run in the build. So I highly doubt it's gonna be actually run. But on its own regard, it is a fun option for Gear Chronicle in a budget sense, as it's a solid card, it discards a card for power, and it retires something from your opponent, so you have some control, and it can synergize with your other discard cards, as you can go, as you can combine it with the grade 2, uh, I believe, Steam something Shulia, that then recalls itself in rest, so you can have an intercept the next turn, or you can combine it with the Chrono Tooth Tigar that can, can recall itself, counter plus one, and you can draw another card. So you have some draw engine going. And if you combine this card together with Escrew Dragon from the previous set, and then combine those Great Freeze as a Great Free lineup together with the Great Four engine from the Great Two and the Great One, then you could have a pretty solid build going where you have control options, you have some tempo plays, you have some draw power, and you can pressure your opponent with some good hitting number. So the only thing that you then need is uh, a couple of great fours in the build where you can then go into those great fours. So there are some interesting tech options that we can go for. So yeah, I'm curious of how that is going to build. But overall, it's a nice budget option. It's probably won't be running any actual builds, but it's nice that we finally get some more budget alternatives as Gear Chronicle tends to be a more, more expensive clan the moment it becomes meta relevant as a lot of the engine pieces are around triple R's and double R's and VR. So yeah, this is a warm welcome for future-proofing the clan for budget players. Now we dive into two new cards. One was leaked from the magazine by, I believe, Freedom Duo. And another card was suddenly revealed by Bruce Road themselves on their channels. And yeah... These cards are gonna make a change in some regards or another. And we first start off with this card revealed from a magazine that is Steam Composer Ul Kagina. And her ability, a great one, uh, is auto regular circle. At the end of the battle, it boosted, cause bind this unit, and one of your fingers gets power plus 10k until the end of turn. All right, this is a very simple skill. It doesn't really amount to much if you just analyze it. But it does bring some interesting things to the table, especially for Mystery Flare and just Gear Chronicle in general, especially if we look at the next card. This card is in some regards similar to the Grade 1 promo card that we got very late for Gear Chronicle. And it also could bind itself, but it costs a Counter Blast, and then you could fetch a Grade 2 from the drop zone to hand. The upside to this card was, was that it could bind itself, so it helps the Mystery Flare for the bind condition, and you could fetch your Grade 2s. But this card doesn't cost you countless, so it's in that regard a little bit better. It still binds itself at the end of the boosted, but in, instead that you get a grade 2 to hand, this card will give your Vanguard plus 10k. And this is a big, big thing for a Gear Chronicle, especially on the very first grade 4 turn. Because usually when you go into your grade 4s, you only have one force markers, and typically you really want to put the force marker onto the regular circle for your 10k units like steam uh, engineer naboo as those units really don't hit on their own and their skills are very useful so you want to have some pressure with those cards meaning you cannot put the force marker underneath your vanguard which will result that your grade 4 which you just discarded for you wasted resources is just a 15k unit and even though it might have triple drive or it might have a crit it's still a 15k unit which means it's pretty easy to guard against 
So you need more power onto that, and you actually rather want to put the force mark underneath it, so you either force them to waste a PG or a lot of shield value from hand. Now with this great one, you fix that entire issue, as you can put this behind the Naboo, so, or, or another 10k grade 2, so it's an 18k column, you can put the force marker beneath it so it becomes 828, or you can put it onto a different column, so that column will become more powerful. Now once you boost it with this, you bind it, give the Vanguard plus 10k, and then suddenly your Vanguard is actually pressuring your opponent. And you also accelerate some bind numbers for the following turn, so it's a nice addition for extra power, and this can work with any great form that we're going to get ever and because it stays until the end of turn if we ever get a restander notch notch wink wink next stage then this value will only increase and this will mean that whatever great four we're going to get there are going to hit stride numbers like in the past as they're usually 15k and then they suddenly jump to 25k so yeah this is gonna be big and i think they really want to go with the whole thing that gear chronicle has actual strides because the following card makes that happen as that is steam scara il kabu and whenever a card ends with boo in gear chronicle like nabu it will make some changes for the clan as this card's ability is act on thing at the record circle once per turn cost Counter plus one and discard a card and one of your vanguards get drive plus one until the end of turn. This makes Chrono Fang Rebellion and Chrono Fang Tiger or Chrono Fang and Chrono Tiger Rebellion even better. As we already discussed in a previous Road to Next Stage when those cards were revealed, links up top if you haven't seen the video, where there is ways for us to actually go to one card in hand, get the full skill off, and then replenish our hand back to six or seven cards. With this card, you can increase it even more and get more value out of your counter blast. Because now you can just force yourself way to one card in hand. You can just use one or two of these Ilkaboos ability, use your counter blast, because you don't care, is everything gonna go face down anyways. Discard your cards, and you will give your Chrono Tiger Rebellion not three drive checks with Chrono Fang, but four, maybe five, maybe even six if you have three of these cards. And then, and then things are starting to get scary. And all those drive checks and all those cards go right back into your hand. So, yeah, this is gonna make Tiger all the more consistent. And I think the whole idea that it's gonna be a very defenseless build is just out of the window right now because they're gonna have a huge hand size after they put their pressure and this is gonna make a change for the build but not only that this card works with everything and on every grade this can even be where you can use this on turn two and if you use it on turn two it is in some regards better blaster dark as you don't have to clear your opponent's field yes it does cause a counter blast but you don't care as you can use it on any type of card. You don't have to use it on this card. This can be on your rear guard. And you can have an actual pressuring unit. And then give it another drive check to make your opponent even more in a bad situation. And this can work with your great 3 turn. This can work with your great 4 turn. This can even work with your strides. So in premium, this can be nuts with re-standers. And there's one that comes to mind. And what's been speculated by a lot of people. And that is Chrono Dragon Gear Next. Yes, it needs a ZTB engine, but if you can combine this with Gear Dragon next, yeah, it is until the end of turn. So meaning if you restand it, you will still attain the extra drive check. So if you are not, say you have four of these cards on the field, you can counter blast four, discard four, and your gear next has seven drive checks. And then once it resend you have GB4 or GB3, I believe it's GB3, then it have five. So that's 12 drive checks. That's... Uh, that's literally busted levels of drive check. Not the amount of attacks, but it does help with the drive checks. And with other cards like Hypnosis Sheep and those kind of things, yeah, you might attain the same kind of multi and going on. So, yeah, that can be really scary. And this, because it's so versatile and so generic, this is going to make a lot of change. Because now Gear Chronicle has a potential early game. And that is what they never had in premium. With this card, they can potentially achieve that. Because it's an act ability 
when it's on the field, so you can leave it on the field and do it probably next turn when your opponent maybe gave you one damage. You can keep coming in with Twin Drive even though we're still at Grade 2. And yeah, because not a lot of decks have an engine going on on Grade 2, this can outvalue a lot of people very quickly if they insist on keeping giving you extra damage. And you can deny them to go for your rearguards if you just put this thing in the back row. Or it is your Vanguard. Yeah, they have nothing else to go for. So that's pretty nuts. But on top of that, it also has the skill continuous on hand. If this card will be discarded, it would be discarded as a grade 3. Yet another Stride Father. So we have the GR Stride Fathers, we have a Grid Freeze, we have Wedge Move Drago Kit, and now we have Steam Scara Il Kabu. If they're gonna keep this trend going, then probably in 2021, our entire deck would be Stride Fathers, which would make it so consistent, it is scary to think about. So yeah, this card is gonna make Chronofang Tiger legit. It's done. You cannot argue anymore that the deck will not function or it will not make waves in the meta. It is gonna change meta, period. Because they can go nuts and they can end up with a giant hand size, no problem. And then this card can also help other cards because just this card together with the grade one Steam Composure U Kagina can make any grade four pseudo stride card from standard into an actual stride unit. Because on, when we boost with the grade one, we can give the finger plus 10k, making a 25k unit. And with this card, for a counter blast, we can give them an extra drive, which means they are 25k units with triple drive. And then they have their extra skills attached to them. So if it's something like Ministry Flare Dragon, they can have another crit, another drive, and potentially 10k power to the whole field, and maybe the extra turn. So, yeah. This is going to make a big difference for Gears. And I'm honestly very excited for this card. Because art-wise, it's a 10 out of 10. And skill-wise, it's most definitely a 10 out of 10. So, yeah. I cannot wait what this will bring for the future for Gears. As once Astral Force is released, things are going to be wild. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. Because this is the road to next stage. And we haven't even seen next stage yet. So, yeah. I'm excited, guys. And I hope you guys are too. As always, let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of these new cards for Gear Chronicle. We got a lot of new interesting cards, free alt budget alternatives. Which one the Grade 2 is an interesting premium aspect with the way that you can draw extra cards and then remove it so you can have some early tempo going on. But most importantly, the Grade 1 and especially the Grade 2, Steam Scara Il Kabu, are going to make some big changes for Gear Chronicles. So let me know in the comments down below what you thought of these cards. And if you are as excited as I am for the new reveals for Gears. As always, this video has been brought to you by our lovely Patreons over at patreon.com slash Vanguard Insider. You guys are amazing. If you want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, then head over to patreon.com slash Vanguard Insider and become a Patreon today. But I'm Mr. Time Leap, and I'll see you guys in the next one.